Today, my guest is the accomplished Riken Kuhl. Uh, Riken graduated from the Air Force Academy with a degree in engineering. Uh, he's also the founder of the Charter Jet Service, uh, Tribeway Airways. And uh, in 03, he competed and won uh, The Amazing Race. That was uh, one of my favorite uh, reality TV shows. Uh, and uh, he's also uh, the author of Here's What We'll Say, and he's also an attorney. And today we're going to talk about his, uh, uh, what he's also the founder of, is an insurance company called Leaselock. And uh, Riken, with that, I welcome you to CREPN Radio. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about Leash Rock uh, for, for your listeners and, and uh, answering as many questions as I can to, to uh, give clarity as to what we do. Awesome. And uh, incidentally, uh, I want to say thank you for your uh, service in the, the uh, Air Force. Um, I always uh, salute the uh, those are men and women that uh, serve in the uh, armed forces there. And uh, before we get before we get going, uh, if you could uh, take a minute and fill in a little bit about your background for our listeners. Um, yeah, you just uh, I um, I went to the Air Force Academy uh, degree in engineering, and um, you know, following that, um, just kind of been a serial entrepreneur myself. Um, I've I've started a jewelry line. I've, I've started uh, a fragrance line. I've written a book, as you said. Um, and that was more of a, a, a personal project rather than a money-making project. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've you know, tried a lot of different things. And um, you know, like, like they always say, I've had a lot of failures, a lot of doors uh, slammed in my face. Um, we swapped I would describe it as probably my first really big home run. Um, you know, aside of um, doing stuff on television, and you know, those things are kind of lucky. Um, but this this has really been born out of um, uh, kind of heart and a lot of hard work, and um, partnering and, and with and hiring a lot of really smart people. So um, this is uh, it's my baby right now. It's the only thing that I'm really focused on it all. Uh, I'm doing it completely full time and um, just kind of have left everything else behind. Awesome. Well, let's talk about uh, Lease Lock. Uh, if we can, can you share how it came about? Yeah, um, I actually had taken a year off in 2009 or the majority of the year to go back to teaching flying. Uh, it was a plan I had to just kind of get my joy back. And uh, I moved out to Palm Springs where the weather is great for flying, uh, except in the summer when it's too hot. Um, but I, I taught there for most of the year. Um, I made no money, uh, but I made a lot of soul money. Um, just being back up in the air was great. And um, the next year um, I got um, a, a project in a position with Viacom in New York. And I went to move to New York to move into a building there. And they told me that I needed to have made 80 times the monthly rent the year before on my tax return. Um, so I had to have made uh, over a quarter million dollars on my tax return um, just to qualify to live in that building. Um, I had great credit. I had enough money in the bank to pay the lease for the full year, and I offered that up, and they said, oh, no, you don't understand. You just don't qualify to live here. So um, this, is, this was a personal frustration for me. Um, so I had to end up calling a friend who didn't make that much to be a, a guarantor for me, a co-signer. Um, and it was kind of the last straw for me because I, I kept thinking, there should be you know, a place where you can go to um, – apply for um, insurance or some kind of a, a guarantee from a company and the company would be the one to back the lease as long as you paid them and uh, you had certain qualifications so that you wouldn't have to go ask friends. Um, I found that there was a company doing something similar in New York. Um, they were just a regional player, uh, only doing it in New York City. And I thought, well, um, that's okay, but 
um, this should be something that's nationwide that everybody can use. And so I started tracking down who had created this um, this project that, that they were doing in New York, this company they were doing in New York. And I ended up on the phone with someone in Hong Kong who was, who was still working for the bank that had backed it, but he wasn't working on the project anymore. And I got a lot of really good information from him. Um, and I came to realize that um, this, this was, this had the potential to be a big insurance product. product. Um, the one that I was researching was a surety bond product um, that was using admitted lines of insurance, which is very regulated and a little bit hard to, to get off the ground. Um, but I decided to try to figure out another way to do it. Um, and so I went the surplus lines route for anyone who knows insurance um, uh, because I just found out what all the options could possibly be. Uh, again, a lot of doors slammed in my face, just trying to find someone to back the idea, back the company in the insurance uh, capacity, not even with investors. Um, and um, I was having some trouble, and so I got frustrated and just started doing it myself. Um, I put up a website. I thought of the name Lee Schwab in the shower, and I just started telling people that I was going to co-sign on their leases, and I, I'm a stranger, and I put some money aside to be able to pay those leases if they ever went into default. And I was charging 10% of the lease value to do it. Um, and just selling it as a financial guarantee that I was the guarantor. And um, with this website and a couple identifiers on it, I ended up getting about 200 applications just out of nowhere. And I did about a dozen of these and, um, and I made about $40,000 in three months um, and nobody defaulted. Wow. Um, all of these people who I who I took on, um, basically by looking at their credit report, looking at their um, which most of their credit reports were horrible or they had none at all, no credit. Um, but I looked at spending patterns and whether they paid rent in the past and spoke to their past landlord and they let me speak to their employer to make sure they were employed and and gainfully employed and in good standing. And uh, it was just kind of a heart thing. And the ones I picked um, didn't default. And then that that woke me up to say, okay, um, credit worthiness is not rent worthiness. It's, it's not, they're not um, the same thing. There's a difference. So um, I, I ended up taking this idea to uh, uh, Mucker Labs in, in Santa Monica uh, in Silicon Beach, they're like a premier um, startup incubator, and I told them about my idea. And um, as I did that, as I went there that day, the founders of Mucker Capital had just gotten a call from their millionaire friend from London who asked them to co-sign on a lease for him because he couldn't get approved in Santa Monica because he had no U.S. credit. So um, they loved the idea, and they were the first ones to really back me. Um, they gave me a little bit of money and uh, a phone and an office, and they set me up with some initial investors uh, who got interested. It was Tech Coast Angels, um, ended up giving me my first $50,000 to do this, just in like uh, 11, 11 different guys came together and put together $50,000 with an idea that was basically on a napkin and uh, said, okay, you know, th this, is, this is something we want to back. So, um, so I, uh, I, I pushed forward from there. They introduced me to my co-founder um, who had just sold uh, a, uh, a mobile advertising company to AT&T. And um, then with that, um, he and I just decided to shut everything down. Um, we had gotten some advice from lawyers who said, yeah, you signed this as a financial guarantee, but eventually if this gets big enough, you really you're really setting premium based on risk and then you were you would pay out claims on if there was a default and those are insurance things that are happening and this is highly regulated and you're really creating an insurance company and eventually a, a department of insurance could shut you down for practicing insurance and not you know having the proper credentials to do so so we decided to create this as a as a complete and compliant insurance program that could operate nationwide. Um, and then I know I'm talking a lot, but just to finish this up, I 
I ended up sneaking into the National Apartment Association convention that, that first year. Uh, this was 2013 now, um, uh, where we had just started going. Um, so this is like, I, I did my first lease watch in 2011, so this is two years later, and I met with the heads of Graystar, um, who said, uh, Graystar is the number one property management company <clears throat> in the country. They have over 400,000 units under their ownership and or control. And they said, well, this is a really good idea. And, and the head of ancillary products said, I was going to start this company years ago. You won't believe me, but this is a really good idea. And if you, if you can make this work nationwide, we need it. And I said, that, well, that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so, um, this little thing just became an obsession and, um, we ended up signing Graystar uh, in the summer of 2016. Um, really proud of that. We we thought went through only $250,000 um, to get to a point to be a full insurance program and signing the largest property management company in the country and and getting through um, their corporate and their legal. <laughs> um, and then uh, my co-founder and I never paid ourselves the whole way. Uh, we even hired our first employee and we paid him before we ever paid ourselves. Um, but we, we brought it there and then we had our first seed round. Our real seed round was last year. Um, we closed that in the fall, about 1.5 million. And uh, we're headed now into our Series A. Uh, we are launching it on October 2nd, uh, raising between eight and 12 million. Um, our revenue is through the roof. We we have uh, increased our revenue fifty percent every month, month over month for the past. Whoops, can you hear me? Three people anymore. We are, we're uh, eighteen people now, and um, it's just it's it's uh, sometimes I have to pinch myself because it's such it's such a cool story. No, I, I would say uh, cool. I, you cut out there a little bit on the audio. You were saying fifty percent month over month growth. Um, I don't know what you said in between there, but uh, with that going to a cool story, yes, that's a, a, a cool story. Um, and congratulations yeah. to you uh, on on your success. This is uh, uh, very exciting. Um, well, I. I I appreciate it and thank you for or kind of taking us through that because I, you know, the what is it and, and I have got some kind of uh, uh, questions on, on this as well. I, I don't know if I shared with you before, but my daytime job is insurance and and so uh, I'm that's what I what I do beyond investing and I work with real estate investors. Uh, question for you. You mentioned before the kind of the bond versus insurance. Uh, what I understand this a little bit more is is it a, a a policy? Are you actually actually uh, issuing a policy that has uh, dates and limits and and an insuring agreement and deductibles and all that? Um, sort of. What, what we're doing is when we get a large property management company to enroll in the lease shop program, we uh, issue one big policy to that property, and it is good in perpetuity. Um, and then. Every time a renter purchases a lease lot for the, the property, we slide that in as a rider. It basically generates an insurance certificate, and that certificate slides in as a rider to that policy. Uh, it, the rider is what has uh, a definite term applied to it, and then when that term is over, that rider slides back out of the policy. Um, and that's basically how it works. Um, we don't charge uh, renters 10% of the lease value anymore. Um, we've really reduced pricing. Um, we, we actually charge about half that now. Um, and, and then we only make the renter pay even half of that to generate the insurance certificate. And we take the rest out in five monthly installments as like an ACH or um, credit card transaction from the renter. So uh, we've really worked to bring the pricing of this way down we always want to be less expensive than the security deposit that the extra security deposit, like a one month security deposit that a landlord uh, or a property might charge a renter. So um, that, that was always our goal. And we, we've gotten there now to where renters say, gosh, I mean, I could pay a you know, 
$1,800 extra security deposit, or I could buy a $300 lease lock and just move it in. Um, you know, the, the, the properties and, and lease lock together are pushing the renter to, to go with the lease lock because the property wants to be covered for all these rent payments. Um, rather than self-insuring with one extra month deposit that really doesn't um, cover the expenses that are associated with the renter defaulting. Sure. Uh, you mentioned the, the defaulting, you know, a, a deposit in, in my, you know, use and, and kind of understanding and experience has been not only for the lack of payment, but then also if there's any damage or to make up uh, any, any deficiencies or uh, against the, uh, the rental agreement. Um, is this, does, does this go into that or is it strictly just that you didn't pay your rent? Yeah, um, the traditional lease lock covered not only lost rent, but also up to a half a month's rent amount in in damage to the unit. Um, so in other words, if the rent were $1,000 a month, we would cover up to $500 in damages. We have since um, transitioned out of that. Now lease lock offers what's called FDI. So if you can understand... The original product is rent payment insurance. This is a, a new type of insurance that we swap coined and we're kind of dominating. Um, it's called rent payment insurance. No one else offers rent payment insurance. We call it RPI. We swap also now offers a new product called SDI, security deposit insurance. So um, what that is, is you know, when the renter, when the, when the property says, okay, your security deposit needs to be $1,000, Leaseshop will charge a non-refundable fee that's about 20% of that. And the non-refundable fee would be $200. So instead of the renter having to come $1,000 out of pocket at move-in, just the security deposit, they uh, can just pay us a $200 uh, non-refundable fee. And then at the end of the lease, the property is allowed to claim up to uh, $1,000 in, in damages to the unit. Um, so we we now bundle this together. Um, the purpose we are trying to help properties approve more renters more quickly, get more renters through the door, uh, come make it so the renters are coming way less out of pocket on the move-in date to make moving not so stressful, um, and then uh, completely eradicate the use of security deposits at all. So no more security deposits for. Uh, damages, no more security deposits for conditionally approved renters who present risk because of their financial background. We have, we have completely realized and determined and found that landlords and property owners and managers hate security deposits. They hate collecting them. They hate managing them. They hate having to give them back and itemize why they only gave back a certain amount. So we've turned that whole thing up for our clients into a pure claims-based process. Um, they don't, these, these, our properties don't have to deal with security deposits and renters anymore. Um, they basically are just, they've turned it all over to insurance that is free to the property. So it's, we're, we're making the renter pay for the insurance uh, that, that the property benefits from. And so it really kind of makes everybody happy because the renter is coming, moving in way less out of pocket. Properties are getting fully covered. Um, and, and obviously the lease lock is able to grow and continue to lower pricing the more we grow our business. We, um, I told you we signed Graystar in June of 2016. Um, we now have over 40 uh, nationwide property management companies signed with lease lock now. And we're now in over a million units which we just hit in September. Wow, congrats. That's that's awesome. Um, Thank you. I want to just back up just uh, on the uh, the insurance policy. So so just again uh, to understand, so essentially the policy, when you enroll a, a property, you're issuing the policy to the, the property owner, the property manager, the landlord, right? And then uh, as a tenant comes on board, uh, a resident, uh, they become a... And they're an endorsement or a rider onto that policy uh, for whatever the period of time is that there is there a is it for the length of their lease is it uh, if they stay for three years do they is there any kind of renewal or is it a one time thing or can you yeah it 
depends on the property. Um, normally, what what properties want is six months of coverage from the time of default. So we will make the term six months from the time of default, and that's what we'll say on the rider. If a property wants full the, the full lease coverage, we can do that too. It's just that obviously the lease lock is going to be more expensive for the renter. It's really unnecessary to go more than six months, for more than six months of coverage from default. Um, number one, I can tell you the reason is that we've been doing this now a couple of years. Um, we've never had a default that has gone over three months, except for one. So we've never had a claim that's been longer than three months, except for one, one four month claim, but we're still offering six months of coverage. The other reason is these big, uh, enterprise property management companies that we Rock works with, they are machines. Um, uh, they're, they know how to. Um, move someone out and then move someone back in and revamp the unit. Um, leasing managers are getting commissions for making sure that uh, occupancy rates are staying high and getting people back into these units. So uh, lease lock definitely benefits the whole program and everyone else benefits to keep prices down by the very fact that these machines are re-renting the units quickly. And, and the reason that's significant is because lease lock will pay um, as long as the, the renter is sitting in the unit during an eviction, they'll pay after the renter has left and, and, we'll, and we'll pay all the way up until they re-rent the unit or until the end of the, the rider term, whichever happens first. So as soon as the, the property re-rents the unit, lease lock stops paying the rent um, and then it's over. So um, that's how it works. Uh, question, is there a deductible for the landlord uh, in this situation? Never. Uh, we never charge the landlord uh, anything and there is no deductible. Uh, we, our goal is to make the landlord completely whole within the terms of the, of the policy and the rider. Well, uh, again, as a, an insurance agent, I got to tell you, that's, uh, that's something that it's usually the, the, oh, by the way, you've got a deductible and, and all the, uh, the uh, you know the exclusions and that and and to that are there any exclusions that would um, apply or prevent a landlord from from collecting or making a claim or um, yeah the, the exclusions are things that anything that is not just a renter failing to pay rent you know if, if a land if a, if the property kicks somebody out because um, you know they're making a ruckus in the building or something like that. That's, that's not what we shot covers. Um, that's, that's at the choice of the landlord to, to remove the resident. Um, we shot is covering that, that unknown risk that every property has to deal with when a renter walks through the door, not knowing if they're really going to pay their rent. So this, we shot is always covering besides the SDI product covering damage. The RPI product, the rent payment insurance product, is just covering that that unknown risk that a renter is just suddenly not going to shun their check or, or now today log in and, and pay with their credit card. So um, that's what we cover. Yeah, if there's a flood um, and the renter can no longer pay the rent because they can no longer live there, no, we don't cover that. Lease lock is, you know, there, but there is other insurance to cover that. Right. Lease lock is covering the loss of rent because a renter is just, moral failure to pay the rent. Gotcha. Uh, that, that's awesome. I appreciate you uh, taking me through that, uh, kind of the, the nuts and bolts there. Um, let me ask you, you, you mentioned uh, kind of the underwriting in the beginning. It was kind of a gut feel, uh, you know, from you, and that, like, okay. you know, credit wasn't always the indicator if somebody was going to be a good, uh, a good renter. And, uh, you know, somebody's been doing insurance uh, for a long time, uh, there was a day when when credit was not part of the equation. Uh, wasn't uh, you know? And today, uh, if you're going to apply for personal insurance, they're going to ask for your social security number because they're going to score you because uh, the uh, insurance commissioners have all been told that you know one's ability to pay is directly related to the claims frequency. And uh, you know, I I forever have felt like. Uh, you know, if you have a medical hardship or something like that and it causes you to go bankruptcy, that has not a lot of, of uh, you know, it's not predictive of how you drive and follow the laws and, you know, that kind of thing. But when you use credit for that, it does have a, a bearing on it. 
Can you go into a little bit of your uh, underwriting or, and, and maybe there, there, there's two things. One, because I think knowing that you guys start with the landlord, what is the criteria for a, a prospective property uh, to engage lease lock? Uh, we're generally working with um, any property managers that are are overseeing uh, more than a hundred or more uh, units. Um, so anyone can can use lease lock, and it, and it's good for really any property manager or any property owner. Um, and we, we have also considered uh, property owners who, who have as few as uh, maybe 20 or 30 units. Um, so that, that's all set. Uh, as far as the underwriting is concerned, um, no, I can't do it to sum my gut anymore. Um, I have to make sure that uh, we're, we're doing this uh, on a really objective and consistent basis. So uh, we have now uh, a full kind of proprietary underwriting system to uh, decide whether or not we're going to take a risk on a particular renter. Um, we're looking at 11 different criteria about the renter's life and financial background. Um, and one of the big things that we're doing now is really, um, it, it's kind of overlapping into artificial intelligence in that uh, we're able now to um, get a hold of a renter's bank statements as long as they give us permission. Uh, and we can look at you know, their last you know, one to six months of bank statements. We can run them through um, our predictive modeling system in seconds and look at the way that they spend money. Um, we are really diving into a, our own proprietary platform that we keep uh, developing and developing and developing. Um, looking at um, spending patterns, and um, and we are, I believe, already number one in the world at predicting whether someone is going to default on their rent, depending on the way and the way and the amounts and the times and how they spend money. Um, so that's been that's been a, a really kind of fun part of WeShop. We're really a big data collection company, but also a data analysis company. Um, and, and we're, we're getting better and better. And every time we have a default, all these codes, uh, that we've assigned to all these different identifiers about any person that, uh, on that default, and we're able to create predictive models based on all those, those light ups. So, uh, we're paying attention to every tiny little detail. Um, and that's why we say to property owners and managers, you know, come to us, <laughs> you know, you want to be with the experts on whether or not someone's going to default on, on rent, come to us. If, if we swap doesn't want them, we like to don't either. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's where we are. No, I, I was just sitting there thinking, you said that, um, you know, the traditional model of, uh, you know, calling the number, calling the prior landlord, and the prior landlord's being afraid of, you know, saying something where they might get sued or, or the uh, employer... Uh, you know, everybody's on their tiptoes about what they can say kind of thing. So there's always kind of a little, you know, how, how, how much information will somebody provide and, and uh, you know, how, how much effort are you willing to put into it? Um, and even when you go and, and you, you check, you know, you're checking for prior evictions or uh, whatever that information is that, you know, you're using to determine whether or not somebody's a qualified uh, tenant for your, your property. Um I would think the the data you're collecting, and again, data uh, the the oh, more data no. the more data you have, and the ability to uh, you know go through it is just in that you yeah, have the actual. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got okay. you back. No, yeah. a lot. I could see you, but I I've been on that end of uh, losing it. But I was just going on on a little bit about the uh, how I think that for a screening. Uh, you know, option that you, you, the information just based on the, the sheer volume of data that you're uh, collecting uh, and in the ability that you've got all these key uh, indicators and you're able to assess uh, and, and kind of really kind of zero that in as to a qualified uh, renter. Uh, that's going to be huge. I mean, with a million, or I, you, know, you mentioned, and I apologize, I wrote it down uh, somewhere. A million, is it a million users or a million doors that you, have uh, under under the uh, properties that you guys are currently working with? 
thing, a million units or doors, yeah. Okay, and I'm sorry that you, you cut out there. What's the, the, the number of your current users? Uh, so we're in a million units now. Okay, okay, well, that's, I just got that. Um, so let me ask you, insurance, uh, you know, there's the premium side of things, and then there's the losses. Um, do you guys have any kind of uh, frequency or loss ratio, or can you, you know, tell a little bit about what your experience is on, on that? Yeah, um, I can't give you exact numbers um, just because it's, it's proprietary for us, but it, it's, it's extremely low. Um, and this is a product of, of the fact that we keep our underwriting really tight, um, and, I, and I think it's attributed to our predictive models as to whether someone's going to default on rent. Um, but, yeah, we're uh, – it, it's, it's low. <laughs> no, I, I can only imagine just based on what you've uh, shared that uh, uh, it's got to be impressive. Um, we talked about, uh, the, the cost, uh, the, the numbers, uh, or I mean, the, kind of the, the qualifiers for, uh, landlords. Um, what's the, the one thing that you would recommend, uh, our listeners that if they're uh, an investor and they've got, uh, properties, uh, multifamily properties. And, and before I, before I ask you this, I assume this is strictly a multifamily residential you don't do you do you bleed into commercial leases at all or is it strictly residential strictly residential as of this point yeah. gotcha all right so let me ask so what's the one thing you'd recommend for our listeners that are or landlords or property managers investors uh in order to have success or or to consider uh if they if they're considering uh, using lease lock um, they should consider um, that we are increasing their revenue, um, we are mitigating their risk, and we are uh, mitigating their default losses to zero, always. Um, these are numbers that uh, properties can take to the bank. Um, they can go and say, you know, it, it helps balance sheets to say, we have responsibly, responsibly gone ahead and remember all those losses we used to have on renter default. We've now sourced insurance for that um, at no cost to us and made sure that our losses stay at zero. So um, those are the three big things that I think properties should consider. Um, they should also consider that we are um, not, you know, although it's not a total down market right now, in, in the rental market, <clears throat> we're kind of inching t more toward a down market. When, you, when properties get into down markets, they end up having to lower their standards to get more renters in, uh, in those down markets because there's just not as much of a demand. Lease stock gives properties the ability to keep their standards the same, nice and high. And we can bring in those renters uh, that, that they might bring in on lower standards and we can kind of turn B renters into A level renters for them. And we back all the risk. So let us pool the risk and take the risk for them rather than them doing it and having losses. Now that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Reichen, uh before we wrap this up, what's the best way for our listeners to find out more about uh, you and, and uh, get in touch or, or learn more about LeaseLock? Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can check out my LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn at Reich and Cool. I, um, as far as LeaseLock, they can go to LeaseLock.com. Um, any investor can uh, feel free to uh, write me an email at Reichen at, at LeaseLock.com. Just my first name at LeaseLock. And uh, I'm happy to send along uh, a preview deck uh, for what, what we're raising for our Series A. Um, and also, if, if, if it's just property investors who don't want to invest in our company, but um, are investing in, in rental properties and they kind of want to see more of how our program works, we'd be happy to jump on a call or have um, jump on a call. We have an amazing enrollment department here. We don't even call it a sales department because we don't sell anything. We're just enrolling. It doesn't cost anything to enroll. So we, we, we can have someone jump on the line and say, hey, would you like to have the benefits of insurance that is at no cost to you? 
um, then here's how you sign up, and you can use this whenever you want or not use this when we don't want to, and that's how it goes. Well, I can tell you, based on uh, our conversation today, I will be uh, uh, tooting your horn there uh, with the uh, landlords I, I deal with here and, and uh, you know, encouraging them to check you out and, and uh, consider working with uh, uh, Lease Lock because it's clearly a, I think you said, like you said, I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, collecting and, and tracking and keeping the, the deposits in a separate account and then reconciling when you, when you undo a lease and all that stuff. It's just, uh, you know, I can only imagine that uh, to let go of that and be able to and, do. And what if you're not complying with the state laws for how you're supposed to be handling deposits? They're so picky. If you, if you look, there's literally over a hundred different state laws about the way that you have to handle security deposits, depending on where you are. If you don't want to deal with that anymore, then don't deal with deposits. And why, anyway, why self-insure for this small amount when you can have full insurance, it doesn't cost you anything. This is why this is a win-win, I think, for everybody. Nah, I, 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 I can only imagine that you you have uh, very little resistance when you're talking to a, uh, a landlord or a property manager about enrolling, uh, you know, unlike, uh, you know, normal insurance, the fact that it's uh, a win-win-win. They, they all... They all seem to go, it's too good to be true. Um, <laughs> what's the catch? You know? and, and it's cool because we say it, it's true. It, it's just you have, to, you have to stop thinking of the old way of doing things, and you have to realize there is another way to do it, and this is a new way, and it's a better way, and it's, it's better for you. It's better for the renter. Um, and when that light bulb goes off, they, they go, oh, my God. And then, you know, when they get their first claim check, uh, we pay claims super fast. We're a fully electronic, paperless company. Um, we we uh, they they the light bulb really goes on, and they go, okay, this is really cool. So um, yeah, it's nice. No, that that's awesome. And uh, you know, they, the the uh, uh, you know typical insurance, and and again, being in that, I, I'm too familiar with uh, all the. Uh, you know, the clauses and deductibles and delays and all that. So if you're able to uh, provide something that's simple and fast and instant, uh, I can only imagine that uh, a lot of happy uh, users out there. And I think that just to reiterate that the big, big benefit there is an additional uh, underwriting of your, your residents uh, with all the data you guys are running. That, that to me is, uh, speaks volumes for any kind of property investor. So, Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyway, Reich, and I want to say thanks again for uh, taking the time to talk today, and uh, I look forward to uh, hopefully doing it again uh, in the future. All right, Darren. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. All right. And for our listeners, if you like the show, share the show with someone you know. It's easy to do, and you can share Reichen's uh, and, and Lease Lock's information. Uh, that's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.